Despite being invented by a Philadelphian, John Stetson, in the 1860s, cowboy hats have come to symbolize Texas, just below the state flag and just above Whataburger. So it's no surprise those who make it to Victory Lane here at Texas Motor Speedway are crowned in cowboy style. The Justin Brand hats are currently supplied by the Milano Hat Company in Garland, founded in 1982. And just like with the race cars, these take a lot of work to get ready to go. Where we're standing right here in Garland, Texas, probably 80% of the world's supply of Western hats are manufactured. We ship uh, about 400,000 hats out of this facility each year. Yeah, quite a few. It's probably the most misunderstood piece of clothing that any human being can wear. There are those that think that you just um, put some fabric on one end of a machine, hit a button and out pops a cowboy hat. But there's actually 200 stages of production that goes into making uh, every single one of our hats. To start out, we get our bodies in from Europe. And uh, when they come in, they come in what they call back shop block. They're partially blocked into small, medium, and large and extra large sizes. Everything goes to a blocking machine on a steam blocker. It's hand steam blocked to size. And then it moves through after that, goes to what we call our first press. We'll press the crown to even out any bumps in the crown of the hat. And then also uh, the same operation on the brim. It's two separate operations, so it kind of flattens out the brim and gets the hat ready to be finished. We'll cut the brim to size and it leaves the brim a little wide out on the edge so we taper each side of that so it gives it a nice narrow look on the edge of the brim and then it'll go through a process of sanding or we call pouncing and it cuts a light layer of the fur off to give it a nice finish. Once we've got the hat finished as far as the open crown and the flat brim then it moves on into the finished press part of the operation. And this is where we give the crown its shape, and then it moves down to the brim flanging area. And this is going to give the customer whatever flange, if it's a western style flange where you just have it turned up squared off in the front, or if it's more like a rancher flange, and this is where it takes its shape. Then we inspect the hat, check for any defects, we clean the hat up and get it ready to go into the trim line. Once the hat's in the trim line, we go to what we call leather fit and the leather is put inside each hat, hand fitted to each hat by size. From there it goes to the trim band operation where we actually put whatever trim part's gonna be available for that hat. Once it leaves that station, it goes to where you have the lining put in and then it goes to hot block, which smooths the leather inside the hat. And then it'll go to where we call our slicking area, which is the last and final inspection before we pack that hat to go to its customer. They're still made the same great way that they were back in John B. Stetson's day. Electricity, that's been probably the only innovation to making a hat. You would think that uh, in this day and age of all the uh, technology that we have, something would have happened to the hat business in that time. But uh, we actually have machines here that were made in the 1920s, and we use them still to this day. We have some people who've been here for all 35 years from day one. And when you talk to them, the biggest thrill that they get is they know that they built something with their own hands and then when they're out in the city or in their towns or whatever and they actually see somebody who has spent money on a product that they made themselves, it's a real thrill for them and they take great pride in that. A single cowboy hat, even on a rush order, still takes about a day and a half to make and straw hats are even more complex as they have to be woven by hand. There is no machine built to do that. But those efforts do not go unnoticed, and even if you don't own one yourself, chances are you've noticed them. Milano's clients include George W. Bush, Toby Keith, Kenny Chesney, Bruno Mars, Jimmy Fallon, Carlos Santana, Tom Landry back in the day, Lady Gaga's latest tour, and they have the only license to make official Indiana Jones replicas. Now that's a list you can hang a hat on. For Texas Motor Speedway, I'm Brian Sandler.